So someone recently asked me, Eric, if there was just one thing I can do to really help my downswing get more athletic, improve my transition, help me hit the ball more solid without having to think about a million things. What is one thing that I could do? And I answered right away, the answer is the float load. Uh, so in this video, JT and I are gonna show you what the float load is and how you can implement that in your swing to help you hit the ball much more solidly. All right, so I've been waiting probably literally 10 years to find a right wrist training aid that I would fall in love with. I have this precision impact training aid that I have been testing now for the past couple of months to make sure I like it. This right wrist training aid, I'm telling you, I've tried them all, is unbelievable. You put this on your right wrist and you'll notice when I make a backswing, it gives me some auditory feedback and I can set my right wrist about as far back as I can and it locks that angle in. And it enables you to create the right wrist bend during the backswing. And also because of this little ball here, I can go up and down when I do it. It's absolutely freaking brilliant. And I've been using this a lot. It's gonna help your impact a ton. You go down below, you click the little link down there for Precision Pro and you grab one of these. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. There's a little coupon code in there. You get 20 bucks off. Keeping the right wrist bent back, okay, is the key. So JT, let's talk about this drill motion, uh, which I really do think is becoming one of my favorite drills. Absolutely. Um, and there's seen this in different places, right? Some people call this the float low drill. Um, I've seen a guy named Chase Duncan down in North Carolina doing this, this drill before. And I think pe people do it in different ways, but there's a way that we talked about doing it that I really think can help uh, everyone watching. Absolutely. And we titled this one to fix all the kind of faults in the swing. You know, not so much as a YouTube title, because it actually could be. It could be, absolutely, right? yeah. This is one of the drills that we think, if you were to do this on a regular basis, right? Some people, it'll be quick. You can, in one swing, see a difference. But if you really work this in your practice over the course of a year, several years, et cetera, you're, I mean, your golf swing and a ball string ability could transform. Yeah, speed. I mean, it's really an athletic motion. So it's something that you have to practice at. Yeah. Um, and this drill is the, the way to do it. But it makes an actual difference, not like a band-aid, no. quick fix thing. This is actually training your motion. So without any further ado, let's dive into to what this is. And so I'm gonna do my best to kind of explain it and then we'll, we'll kind of talk, talk through it. it here. So my goal here is really to train my sequencing or my body motions, how certain segments work. I'm trying to create speed. I'm trying to create solid contact, get a lot of distance for free, all the things we want, right, Shaflin? For sure. And so how we do this and with this little drill is I'm gonna take my normal setup. I've got a seven iron. I think probably a short to middle iron would be fine to start with. Yep. And I'm gonna do the first part of the move. And I'd say there's three parts to this. Part one is I'm gonna do my takeaway motion and I'm gonna go back GT until my hands are about mid thigh or the club's about parallel to the ground. Yep. Now there's two big keys I think we'd say here. One is I want my arm to be pretty darn straight. Yep. And two is I want my wrist to be almost fully unhinged. Absolutely. So the club is parallel to the ground, my right arm straight and the wrist is unhinged. Face, now the re face down as well. Yeah, fa I face tilted down, right. So when I go back here and do this, right arm pretty straight, wrist unhinged, and JT mentioned a point I forgot, the club face needs to be tilted down to be able to do this. If my club face is too open, this ain't gonna, gonna be, work. No, he might hit me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my club face is tilted down, you know, a little bit, right? Maybe 20, 30 degrees tilted down here. Now the key and the reason why I want this arm to be straight and this wrist unhinged is in a moment when I do my motions, that's gonna allow me to create that right arm bend and that trail wrist bend in transition. Absolutely. Instead of me having it so early and then I lose it. So part number one, right arm, right wrist fully lengthened, club face tilted down. Part two is kind of where the, the secret sauce happens, right? Absolutely. And, and as I do this, so my arms and hands, I'm gonna feel are going up and back. We're gonna do a little yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So visual here. Orange line will be uh, basically the force of the hands, and yeah. then the yellow line will be more force of basically the, the middle of the body, the pelvis, and the, and the chest. Okay. So my arms and hands, once I get my spot, face tilted down, right arm, right wrist, my arms and hands are gonna feel like they go up and back about a foot as my upper body, my body motions, are working down and forward. Absolutely. And that sort of creates that like whiplash effect, right? Of the shaft that creates all the good things we want. Absolutely. Right? So body if I would react to that. Yeah, right? It reacts to that. The shaft gets forward, the solid contact, etc. So when I go here like this, what it'll look like is here to there. Perfect. Now as I'm doing this motion and I'm here, as my arms and hands are going up, I'm feeling like my chest, rib cage, shoulder are working down and forward in this direction yep. as my hands are working up. Exactly. So my left arm feels like it's pressing in against my pec 
And as I'm doing that, JT, I'm really feeling like I'm trying to create as much speed as I can with the club. With the club. From that little motion. For sure. So let's demonstrate a couple here. We'll kind of talk through some details. Mm -hmm. But if I were to work in, I'm going to go to here. Club's parallel. Right arm pretty straight. Right wrist unhinged. Face is tilted down. Key point. And as my arms and hands go up, I'm going to feel the body motions working down and forward. And as I do that, I'm looking to create speed. Now, I have my 7-iron probably about 170. I don't have my track man up, but I'd be willing to bet that that went about my full distance. Without a doubt. So when you do this correctly, the speed you can create, even with a shorter swing motion, you should be hitting the ball once you get used to it. Right? Pretty, pretty close to the same distance. Pretty close. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So same thing here. Right arm straight, right wrist unhinged, just to here. So I'm not, I'm not like this, right? Right arm up about a foot as I go down and forward. Absolutely. So I'm to here. And that's how I create my motion. And that's about as good JT as I could hit a ball. And <laughs> to be honest with you, like the more and more I see this, the more and more we talk about, and the more and more I do this, this to me is becoming quickly like my favorite drill. And it's my favorite drill, I think, because you get so much for free. Absolutely. Right, so if I do this motion correctly, and I train this in, and I learn how to feel that, I get the shaft lean, I get the dynamic loft, I get the distance, the speed, et cetera. And so, I mean, for me, if someone were to do this as maybe part of their warm up, you know, and just train it in on a regular basis as they're practicing with a shorter club, and then, you know, you could do that forever. You could do it forever, yeah. And so, I think that's kind of how the stock drill should work, yep. and you work through that. I think while we're here, maybe one or two little caveats for people. Absolutely. So what would you say could be some ways I could mess this up? What are some things to keep in mind? Yeah, so I think a really important thing that uh, we pointed out was the club face being down. It and it's down. important on how the club face is down. Yeah. So we don't want to um, basically flex our lead wrist too much, bend our wrist back too much. We're not doing this. We're not doing those things to keep the club face down. Simply right. all that we're doing is, if anything, we're just kind of pointing our elbow or keeping our elbow pointed slightly more towards the ground. Yeah. So that's that's a really key piece here in terms of allowing the club face to stay down while keeping all the range of motion in the wrist, right? If we, if we run out of all that range of motion in the wrist, then in, in transition, we're going we're gonna to lose it all. So we want to yes. have that range of motion, have a bunch of it in that transition, get it all in there. That's a good point. I'm almost fully at my other end of range of motion, which enables me to work the other way. That's a good point. So I'm not going to go right up hinge here. I can't go more hinge. Exactly. Okay, got it. So face being tilted down. What about guys and gals who do this and they really throw a lot from the top? Absolutely, so um, what we're looking to do is as we feel this pull, so it's really important on, the, on this drill that the way we're getting the club to the ball is not by yanking this arm down. So unloading this arm, getting that to the ball. That's not how we want to do it. We basically, as, as you've pointed out, is as those arms are going up, we're feeling a huge stretch and a pull here, basically yeah. through our lats, through our obliques, through our hip there, to get that club down. I feel a huge activation there in my shoulder and lat motion compared to normal. For sure. And someone who might throw, they might actually feel like they're they're consciously hinging a little as they do Consciously hinging, but more than anything, really pushing their left arm away from them. So get, getting some width. So as far as they can get it away, that's going to help that uh, club hinge back more. So, so if I, they pull that lead arm in, right? So if I bend my lead arm, yeah. right now I lose all of that tension on the shaft. That's how we see a lot of golfers okay. coming to the ball. So if I need to, as I'm doing this, I can even feel even more of that hands working up and in, arm against... Uh, bicep against my pec yes. motion as I do my downswing. Yep, and then adding in, you know, if you got, if those guys are really letting out the shaft, maybe adding in some of that hinge or feeling some of that float loading that, you know, people have talked about. Yes. But the more we can push that arm away, keep that lat active, yep. the more we're able to keep that um, lag on that club. When we lose that activation of that lat, we lose all the force that we have on this club, lets out completely. That's this what we see. Yes. So this is how this fixes so many things makes perfect in that sense. little amount of time. So I think this in terms of, there's not a lot of things in the golf swing that I think are completely universal. That you could say, hey, no matter who you are, what your golf swing looks like, et cetera, you should do this. For sure. This I think is one of them. I agree. You know, it's like, a, it's like some kind of putting start line drill. Like everyone should do a start line drill. I think everyone should do this in mm -hmm. terms of sequencing, speed, et cetera. So my challenge to you would be regardless of your skill level, start to put this in. If you hit a couple funky shots in the beginning, guess what? You're just like us. Okay. Okay. That's normal. Yeah. Build your way up through it. 
watch this and start to practice it and put 10 to 20 reps in. Uh, and I, I really truly believe in this one is a really good one. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully helps uh, you guys. JT, thanks for coming out. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Thanks, Great. man. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you did like the video, do us a favor, click that like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe. If you would like some coaching, if you would like me to look at your swing, help build you a personal plan, go ahead and click the Cogorno Golf logo on the screen. We'll take you right there. We'll also include two other cards if you'd like to learn more about today's topic.